Um, some of them are, are, don't, are, are not familiar with it. I've had to educate my on, on it. Um, another one I've gone to, she's been doing them for years. She's like, yeah, I understand that. I, I'm very investor friendly. One of the main differences between a wraparound mortgage and all-inclusive trust deed, I want, to, I, I want you guys to listen to these words. All-inclusive trust deed, which is a wraparound mortgage, and a contract for a deed. They both have the term deed in it. One is actually, you're getting deeded the property. You are the owner of that property with that deed. Contract for deed is you're making the payments over time. Once you make that final payment, you then get the deed. So, so you can use wrap around. Basically, you want to buy it as a wrap. So you said you sell it as a contract for deed. I can buy as a wrap. I can sell as a wrap too. I prefer to do contract for deeds, yeah. But you can use a double closing for a contract for deed, and this is how you do it. You have the contract for deed. So uh, num simple numbers. I'm buying from Pierre a property for $50,000. Um, I'm going to buy it sub two. So I'm taking over $50,000 worth of debt. He wants $10,000. So hey, no problem, man. I'll give you $10,000 for your property. So oh, my overall purchase price is actually $60,000. I now have sold it on a contract for deed to Cody over here for $85,000. So, but Cody's only going to come in with, let's say, $15,000. 10 is going to go to Pierre, 5 is going to go to me, um, but you're also going to pay closing costs on it and stuff like that. So the way we do this is we set up title so that I'm getting insurable title from Pierre to me, and then also when I turn around and I sell it to Cody on a contract for deed, He's not going to get title, but what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sign a deed over, and escrow is going to hold that in that deed in escrow until he makes his final payment to me. And then it's already been signed, it's already been executed, he'll then get the deed then. Exactly right. That's contract for deed. Right. And it's fast if they break the contract. It's fast. You don't have I'll come in the middle of the night and take your car, man. Take property, come take your house. Take your yeah. But it's it's quick. Where in the other one you do the all inclusive the Here's my mistake that I made with my all inclusive deed, okay guys? This is where I got screwed. The buyer had his attorney draft my all inclusive tra trust deed. He drafted it. He's from Texas. He drafted it using Texas law. Texas is a judicial state. I go to foreclose on this guy because he's not been paying his, his mortgage. Guess what? I can't use California non-judicial foreclosure. The certain phrase that was missing out of my all-inclusive trustee was power of sale. Because the clause, power of sale, was not there that says I have the power to sell this property at auction if you do not make the payments, I had to go through the judicial process. Because he had, the bank had already started the non-judicial process by me going judicially, I had already lost that foot race. They were months ahead of me. So I just let, let it go. And he corrected it and made it, made it current. But yeah, it was it was... Sucky. I learned all this stuff the hard way, guys. <laughs> so when you do your all-inclusive trust deed, I, I, I have now one that I, I use that has the power of sale clause in it. You can get them also online. You can just jump on, like, uh, any title company you have has a, has a list of all the forms, editable forms that you can use. Why do they do that? Because they want you to use their title company and their services. So every form that you need is out there at the title companies. Wow. Already compliant for your state. So Ryan, could you give an example of when you would actually do an all-inclusive wrap versus a contract? I mean, you prefer contract deeds, contract for deeds. Is there contract. an example where you would actually want to do the, the wrap instead? Wouldn't contract for deeds be more for your cash flow? No, they both have cash flow. The only time I would do an all-in, so yeah. I do my all-inclusive uh, deeds of trust when I have a seller who, or a buyer, excuse me, when, when someone wants to buy the property and they want to be completely hands-off and they want all the taxes, all the insurance, all the benefits to go to them directly. 
they just like, look, I, I don't want to deal with this, the, the contract for deed, or I'm concerned that you may die and I don't get the deed, or all these, all these reasons, that's the case that I would do that. And, then, and usually what I end up doing is I end up jumping up my, my, um, my fees for them to do that, closing costs and everything. I say, okay, in order to have that happen, this is what needs to happen on, on everything. Are you willing to, to come out of pocket an extra five, $7,000 in closing costs to make that happen? And usually they're like, oh, no, 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 I'm okay, actually. What happens to that? You know, you, I think you did something that I just, just kind of stuck in my head. Is that's a good, you know, something that happens to you in parish. Yep. But um, is, there a, is there something in that contract? You know, somebody, you know, in trust, someone takes over your interest? Yeah, take care of my heirs. So the property has been sold, so my heirs continue to receive the payments and all that stuff. Yep. Uh, everything, yeah. Can't be sold, can't be anything. Yeah, they just, my heirs inherit the payments. So documents and disclosures to close. We're going to go over two kinds. We're going to go after, uh, go over the original seller to you as the new buyer, and then we're going to go after you as the new seller to the new buyer. Cool with that? So the original seller to the new buyer, which is you, we're going to go over the Affidavit of Understanding, the California Grant Deed, the Limited Power of Attorney, LPOA, the Land Trust, and the QWR. I'll go into what that is. These ones require notary signatures. These ones require legal descriptions for the properties. Um, real quick, where do you get the legal description at, guys? Title. Title. The grant deed will have it. Where else will you find it? County assessor will have it. The deed of trust will have it as well. So you're going to need to know what that legal description is prior to drafting these contracts. Not even the address. Nope. Uh, not even that. We're going to. I'll show you an example of a legal description. Yeah. It could be several things. Yeah, but it, it's not the APN. The APN is how you can look for it, and the address is rarely ever found on a uh, deed, okay. on a grant deed. So legal descriptions like lot two of subdivision five. You know. Parcel five, parcel nine, northwest. northwest corner. Yeah, you know, meets and bounds, fifteen feet from here. Yeah, that's what a legal description is. So the affidavit of understanding. So if you remember uh, yesterday, I talked about seller's disclosures. Nine times out of ten, when I'm going through a subject, a subject to purchase, I am not doing that seller disclosure. I'm using because I know I'm going to get an affidavit of understanding notarized by them at time of closing. So this is what I I use with this. So, uh, basically it says this is an important legal document concerning the sale and deed transfer of your house and should be read carefully. If you have any questions, contact an attorney before signing. I never read that part to them. I let them read it if they want. What I have them do is, because again, they're in a situation where like, look, I don't care. Just help me out of the situation. So, I make them fill this out. I don't fill it out for them. So, number one, I am currently in default on my loan and unable to make up my back payments or continue making further payments. I have attempted several other avenues of making of action to remedy my financial situation, including, I let them write down, whatever they've done. I've had a person say, nothing. I'm like, okay, write down nothing. <laughs> it's their choice. And then they initial it. And then this is important as well. Number two, I am agreeing to sell and it is or is not my principal residence. They mark that one. Then I, um, I reasonably believe that I have no equity in this property, or I reasonably believe that I have, and I have them write in how much they think they have in this property. So I want them to state how much they think they have. It's not coming from me. It's them. I, I've never had anyone say that they had money in this property. Whenever they fill this out, they go, I don't have any money in this property. That's fine. Go ahead and. Uh, not, Check market and put initial. Um, 
Number 3A, I understand that my mortgage holder, even after agreeing to, to reinstatement, forbearance, short sale, or a deed in lieu may require that the difference between the original balance and negotiated balance be paid by me and hold me personally liable for such a payment. <laughs> 